All right, we start with news just coming in. North Korean hackers are believed to have stolen hundreds of classified military documents from South Korea. The stolen data includes detailed wartime operational plans of Washington and Seoul. A report in a prominent South Korean daily has in fact quoted lawmaker Ri Shiol Hee of the ruling Democratic Party as saying that the hackers have got their hands on South Korea's plans to decapitate North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in case of a war. All right, let's get in. Ramesh Ramachandran, we're on senior international correspondent for a perspective on this story. Ramesh, if this is true, this would come as a big blow to the diplomatic efforts that have been talked about between Seoul, uh, in fact, between Pyongyang and Washington. Absolutely, Sana. As you said, if this is prove, proven correct in, in, uh, in the days to come, then it might be a big setback for South Korea given the tensions obtaining on the Korean Peninsula even as we speak. But the instant report uh, has been published by a section of the South Korean media and it quotes a South Korean lawmaker as alleging or claiming that uh, in September of last year, the North Korean hackers uh, conducted what is known as a cyber attack on South Korean defenses and military installations and stole data and their war plans and preparedness. Uh, also the allied forces information in the U.S. and South Korean forces and all the relevant strategic and key data pertaining to U.S. Uh, and South Korean military access as it were and uh, almost uh, more than 300 gigabytes of information allegedly stolen from the South Korean military installation. So it is no doubt uh, an astonishing uh, claim made by the South Korean lawmaker. And it comes at a time, as you said, uh, Sana, then tensions are running high and we've heard from President Trump speak about uh, how he say he feels that uh, the world community has not been able to handle right. North Korea for the better part of nearly three decades now. All right. Joining me right now is also Professor MD Nalapad, strategic affairs expert. Sir, thanks so much for speaking to us. As we were talking about, uh, how much of this report do you believe would be true? Uh, we are talking about, uh, you know, a special unit of North Korean hackers, the Lazarus Group, which has come out uh, with these revelations. And how big a blow do you think it's going to be to the diplomatic efforts going on between uh, Pyongyang and Washington? That uh, North Korea is very advanced in its cyber intrusion capability. And in fact, it's getting a lot of help by private citizens in Russia some private citizens in China and even in Europe. It has a network of uh, cyber experts across the world that are helping the North Korean military in this kind of hacking. Secondly, North Korea itself is relatively free or immune from this kind of hacking for a simple reason that the North Koreans rely on word of mouth, they rely uh, on long hand, and they rely on methods which don't involve the Internet at all. So from the North Korean point of view, obviously they'll be very interested in finding out what likely battle plans there are, because let's not forget, from their point of view, they're now facing an existential threat. And more importantly, with President Trump coming to power uh, 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 on the 20th of January, the reality is the North Koreans have got a huge element of unpredictability. Right. Nobody quite knows whether President Trump will pull the trigger and if he does so, when he will do so. And uh, Professor Nalapat, also, uh, how significant is the fact that this happened, uh, you know, about a year earlier and not after we saw the escalation of tensions on the Korean Peninsula? And uh, what happens now? Because how will Kim Jong-un take this uh, plot, uh, which, uh, which, you know, very detailed plot by South Korea to assassinate him? How is he going to take that? Well, I think Kim Jong-un is a very rational leader. And despite his young age, he seems to be having a very clear uh, game plan and a battle plan for North Korea. The reality is that the South Koreans have talked openly more hundreds of times of decapitation, that basically doing away with Kim Jong-un. And I think that is part of the reason why he's promoting his younger sister to the Politburo in case something happens to him. He wants the Kim family to remain in, in command. So this is a, a fairly standard practice on the part of North Korea to hack and to get battle plans and to use their army of spies in South Korea to get information.
right? All right, we seem to have lost the line with Professor Nalapat. But Ramesh, coming back to you, give us a sense of, uh, you know, there are many reports now which talk about how Kim Jong-un might have access to these documents earlier and how he's changed his itinerary, given the fact he's not traveling in his cars that he used to travel in. He's changed the spots where he used to holiday. Do you think all of that, uh, you know, is in light with this uh, uh, assassination plot that the hackers have now got in their possession? Indeed, so now just to take off on the point where Professor Nalapad left, North Korea, as he said, is immune to such attacks because they're not uh, that internet savvy. They not, do not allow internet connections that much at that level inside North Korea, and that is the advantage that they have. But on the other side, they have the technological wherewithal, the prowess to hack into computer, computer systems in South Korea and around the world, especially with help from lone wolves or people who are willing to help them uh, in such uh, operations. But that said, uh, Sana, North Korea is one of two key foreign policy challenges uh, which the America, Americans face today. One is North Korea, the second is uh, on Iran. And on both these issues, we've seen dissonance uh, between the State Department and the Pentagon in the U.S., both uh, pulling in different directions, one advocating diplomacy, the other advocating a more muscular military approach, and it remains to be seen which way President Trump decides to go on the issue of North Korea, but that's it. In recent weeks, we've heard from President Trump and his team that uh, Washington has opened a channel of communication with Pyongyang. It remains to be seen where these uh, talks lead them, lead the both sides uh, on this, on this right. uh, point.